Welcome back to I Love. I am Podan. On today's episode, we will be discussing the third part of the Prime Wars trilogy, Transformers Power of the Primes. The series consisted of 10 episodes with a combined runtime of roughly two hours. The series originally ran from May 1st to July 3rd of 2018. Now let's get into our movie roll call. The series was developed and written by F.J. DeSanto, Adam Beechin, and Jamie Irikalinos. The series was directed by Yuzi Sato. The series was animated by Tetsunaku Productions again, produced by Machinima, Tetsunaku, and Hasbro Studios again, was distributed by Machinima Incorporated again, exclusively for Go90 streaming service. Go90 was shut down, but the show is now on Rooster Teeth with exclusive rights, so you can watch it there. Let's go through our characters of the show. Megatron's team. Megatron, of course, is our hero. We have Windblade, the city speaker. Perceptor, the scientist. Victorion, the prophet. And, of course, Grimlock, the Dinobot, joins them. Our agents of chaos, of course, are Overlord, the wild card. Rodimus Kron, as Hot Rod c gives himself his new chaos name. Unicron shows up as he can speak through Rodimus Kron, and at a certain point, will take him over. Our villain, of course, is Megatronus, the Fallen, the Prime, the Flame, the First Decepticon. We get to see in a flashback the Prime Solus Prime, who of course is the forger who created all of the divine objects. The agent of the primes is of course Optimus Primal, who guards the Requiem Blaster, who eventually will turn into Optimal Optimus and be our new prime and new leader. The combiners that we get to see in this show, we get a couple new ones, but Devastator, the combined form of the Constructicons, Menasaur, the combined form of the Stunticons, Computron, the combined form of the Technobots, Predaking shows up, who is of course the combined force of the Predacons, Volcanicus, who is a new combiner, who originally was seen once in the comics, we'll talk about that later, but he is the Dino Combiner. Very cool, very cool. Some side characters we see are, of course, the four Dinobots, Swoop, Snarl, Sludge, and Slug or Slag, depending on if you're going by the comic or cartoon name for him. The uh, Spark of Starscream is seen again, and Hot Rod comes back, and, of course, Optimus Prime returns. Okay, we have our tagline or prelude, and it is thus... In the aftermath of the Titans' conflict that concluded with the death of Optimus Prime, the rest of the Transformers must stand together to stop the Mad Prime, Megatronus, from wiping out their entire species forever. During the search for the Requiem Blaster, more mysteries of Cybertron's past will be uncovered, and a new Prime will be chosen to light this dark hour for all Transformers. Hell yeah. After all that darkness in the last one, it's time for some light. That's fantastic. Now, let's go into my quick and effective review. I'm going to make this very short because I have an extra pile of spoiler stuff because this is the final chapter, but of course you all know I loved it. I absolutely loved The Power of the Primes. It is a fantastic end cap to the series we have been watching, and it also acts as a true end to G1 and a send-off to Beast Wars and Beast Machines, the final conclusion of G1. So that is fantastic, and I, fan I loved it. It was great. Now, let's go into an extra long spoiler time deluxe for this show. All right, let's start with my favorite scenes of this show. There is a bunch, because I want to go into some extra cool stuff and some special stuff. So let's start off with Megatronus killing Solus Prime in the beginning of the story. This is very important as it is the catalyst, 
the reason for everything occurring, Megatronus's his drive and what he is doing. So let's take a quick peek at that scene here. No, it wasn't. I didn't mean to. Megatronus, why would you tear us apart like this? That was amazing, and even a little sad, because he shows some real emotion in that scene. And of course, Mark Hamill is fantastic. So let's give it up for Megatro Megatronus and his loss of Solus Prime, even though it is at his own hands. Oops. <laughs> now, the next scene, I talked about it before, this is going to be uh, Volcanus' first combination. This is, of course, fantastically epic, and it's just... Incredible that they included this, because this was shown in the comics once before, but he didn't have a name yet, actually. They just called him the Beast because of the, uh, the simple minds of the Dinobots. When they combined, they just went mad and, like, reaped chaos back when they did form together. But this is a cool realization of that idea here, and, of course, they gave him a name, Volcanicus. So let's take a look at his epic first combination right here. Fantastic. I love that scene. It's a callback, like I said, to the comics, and it's even a callback to an amazing toy. I'll show you a picture of it right here, because it's really cool. But yeah, the Dino Combiner Volcanicus. Next, let's check out a quick scene of Megatron coming in to stop Predaking. Predaking shows up, reaping chaos, just annihilating all of our team, and Megatron comes back finally after obtaining the Requiem Blaster, and he just shuts Predaking right up, because similar to when he yells at Devastator even in the, uh, the, first, the first story, of course, Combiner Wars, but let's see him just put an end to Predaking's rage right here with nothing more than words and balls, my guys. Now give me the Enigma of Combination. She has it. Victorion doesn't have the Enigma Predaking. It was stolen from her. <sighs> However, when we find it, we'll let you know. That was incredible. And I love it, because Megatron, of course, is our leader. He's leading our team. He is our new hope, and we can hope that he can stand up to everything that stands in his way, and it seems like he can, and that's great. I love it. Our next scene is a fun one. It's, it's hilarious. This comes a little later when our team starts trusting Megatron's intentions more, and Grimlock just runs up and gives him a, a friendly embrace, and I just, I love when we get moments like this in Transformers because we remember that they are, they're alive, and they, they care for one another. Let's take a quick look at that heartwarming moment right here. Megatron! Megatron save us! Megatron's not bad after all! At least me, Grimlock! Pretty sure Megatron not bad! That was fun. I love it, because Grimlock is awesome. He's a great guy. Next, now this kind of leads into, bleeds in with all of that, because now our team trusts Megatron, and it's great because he gives him a little quick speech there to his new found team that fully trusts him now as their leader and their hope to save Cybertron and everybody. So let's take a look at his great little scene and speech here real quick. Lead the way, Megatron. <clears throat> Lead? No. I'm no one's leader anymore, especially not for a suicide mission, which this is certainly going to be. Are you kidding? We've been following your lead this whole time. Megatron 
is rising to the occasion, the challenge. He is leading, and it's great because that goes into our next scene really here, which is, of course, the thing that he mentions under his breath because he's not saying it to his team. He's saying it to himself and, of course, to his lost friend, Optimus Prime. Let's take a quick look at what he says right here. This touches on last show when they had their, in uh, Titans Return, when they had their little bromance, when they were talking, you know, they, they kind of buried the hatchet and spoke as friends more or less, not as rivals and enemies anymore. And that's just awesome that, you know, he's, he's kind of doing this for Prime and he feels bad that Prime is gone now. He misses his friend. Next, next we have a great moment that we think is almost going to be a sad one and that is overlord gets his revenge on megatron finally and it's great but does he really let's take a quick look right here Over the little chest pain, megatron. <laughs> i had hoped for revenge for so long I began to worry it would live up to expectation. Oh, but it does. Brutal. I mean, he gets some gets some good hits in on Megatron there, but it's awesome because that leads us right into our next scene. Because of course, uh, Megatron and Overlord have to have a quick tank battle, and of course, Overlord's unique nature allows him to transform into the two parts. The jet starts fighting everybody else, but the tank fights Megatron as a tank in a little tiny close range tank battle. And I love it because tanks are awesome. Let's take a look at the tank battle right now. That is awesome, because these are, of course, robots in disguise, and we don't get to see much of them transformed, and this is a good call-out and bringing of the transformations and transformed battling into this show. So thank you for the tank battle. Next, of course, the conclusion of the fight. Megatron defeats Overlord for good. Let's take a look at that epic ending right here. That is awesome. And now we know, I mean, we saw it earlier in the uh, intro scenes, but now we know the true and full potential of that Requiem Blaster. I mean, he literally blew a hole, a chunk, right out of the side of the entire planet to annihilate <laughs> Overlord. My buddy, my favorite, one of my favorite villains. He's gone. But it's good, because he was, he was annoying and he deserved it. You know, he killed too many people. Next, next we have Optimus Primal becoming optimal optimus and our new leader this is an epic scene i love what he says and it's just it's emotional it's fantastic when you see this go down because you it connects to the things you know like when rodimus became the prime the, the the stories when they tell you when optimus became a prime and it's it's done very well and let's take a look at our new leader right here Bye. Truly epic. I love it. I love all the callbacks. So much in this show. So much epicness. And this leads us right to, of course, Unicron f fighting our new leader, Optimal Optimus. 
And this is fantastic. There's some great blows exchanged here. Let's take a quick look at those, those uh, <laughs> right here. It's an epic fight. Transformers no longer fear you. Hell yeah. That was good. I love it. I mean, Optimus... Optimal Optimus versus Unicron taking over the body of Rodimus Kron. What a, what a combination and a fight. It's fantastic. And this leads us to the ultimate spoiler. Make sure you watch the show. Look away if you haven't seen it yet. Here it comes. We're going to take a peek right now. The ultimate sacrifice, because he was going to do it. He said he would. Megatron sacrifices himself, finally at the end, to rid us all of the burden and evil of Unicron. And it's it's amazing that he does this. And it's cool, because in my mind, I just see it. I mean, some people are probably like, oh, I, I wish he didn't. But I think he does it because, you know, in his mind at this point, he did this all for Optimus Prime's memory and to save the planet that he knew he would save but could not. And if Prime is gone, I bet he feels inside that he should be gone as well. And bam. Let's take a look at that epic sacrifice right now. Thank you, Megatron. It's the least I can do for my team. No, no. I'm so close. Oh, shut up. Farewell, Megatron. amazing i love the lines even the lines that they say in this part they were such a callback to the movie when you know when he was originally turned into galvatron back when and it's just done so well thank you guys thank you so much i love that so many connections so many callbacks and this takes us right to favorite lines my favorite lines again there's a few a few but there's so much good stuff i gotta talk about it all and show it all let's start off right with the opening speech that Megatronus gives us when he's walking through. I feel like uh, this is a cool introduction and it's just a fantastic taste of what's to come. And we get to see these digi plants and this location. And let's take a look at the epicness of Megatronus's opening speech. Were I not doing this for you, I would not demean myself in such a manner. But now that Optimus Prime has been shown the folly of daring to bear the title of a Prime, this will all be worth it, particularly if either my minions or I locate the Requiem Blaster. What a badass. And of course, Mark Hamill delivers the lines, because he is epic and fantastic as well. Thank you for being in this, Mark. That is great. Next line, next one we got up here is Megatron's speech to the team. Now this is a cool one because this is a funny one actually because they don't just truly trust him just yet and don't really realize that they're following in him even though they are and they don't want to admit it yet. But let's take a look at what he says to them because it's, it's funny and awesome. Because you don't trust me or because you, Perceptor, feel you owe Optimus some debt of responsibility. How noble. And don't think I've forgotten the debt you owe me for helping defeat the mindless combiners from killing Fortress Maximus. You tell him, Megatron, because you're the only one who can stop Megatronus and save all the Transformers. And they know it. Awesome, awesome. Now here's a fun one, too. This is uh, when they first run into Grimlock in the Primal Swamp. This is great, because he has this funny proclamation he tells to the Transformers. And it's also like an answer, because like, I'm sure a few of us were all like this whole time, like, hey, where are the Dinobots? Why aren't, why aren't they here? Or even, you know, the Predacons. This kind of bleeds into the Predacons, too. You know, like, they're simpler, and they just they don't want to deal with any of this stuff, and they're more or less just chilling. And uh, let's take a look at that awesome proclamation right here. Peace for a long time. 
No Autobots fighting Decepticons, fighting Dinobots, fighting Combiners, fighting Titan. Now everything crazy everywhere. Everyone scared. Everyone think world ending. Everyone fight everyone. Meet Grimlock. Hell yeah, Grimlock. You tell those guys why you don't want to deal with their crap. Because you're Grimlock, and you don't give a damn. I love it. I, I love it. It's fantastic. Like I said, there's there's so much good stuff in this show. Make sure you watch it. It's so good. Next. Next is a fun one. I love this scene. And it's just one of those kind of emotional moment things where, like, you just kind of step outside yourself that you're watching a show about robots, you know, that can transform. But it's Megatronus. He speaks of the art that he finally realizes that you know, the Enigma and the Matrix are that, you know, his love, Solus Prime made all those many years ago. And it's just epic that they have this, these cool moments and lines in the show that are, that are this, this fantastic. Let's take a look at that right here. In all the millennia, I never considered their true beauty, regarding them only as tools. Now, it is both tool and art. For it shall help me bring back the most precious work of art ever built. That's awesome. I love stuff like this. Anything that makes it more real, more tactile, you know, like realistic. The way that we would think of stuff. It's just, it's fantastic. I love it. Next, next we have a cool moment. This is where the formerly, you know, Hot Rod, he's been transformed into this, this black chaos form of himself. He finally you know, proclaims to Overlord while they're wreaking havoc, I believe it's when they're beating up the, uh, the Combiners, actually, at this point. But he finally proclaims that Hot Rod is dead, he is gone, and he is going to call himself Rodimus Kron from now on, the uh, avatar or speaker of Unicron at this point now. So let's take a look at that awesomeness right here. The Matrix of Chaos has made me very powerful, Overlord. It has chosen the name Rodimus Kron for this metal shell. Hmm. Well, whoever the hell you want to be, I'm glad you're dancing to my tune. And on that uh, awesome note of him, uh, you know, proclaiming what he is, now we get a cool flashback of kind of where this all comes from, and this is awesome. I'm so glad they showed this. But, like, uh, they showed... Unicron's head in the opening sequence and sure enough they actually go there and that is where in the past uh, on upon Megatronus's request or orders this is where Overlord goes and gets obtains the Matrix of Chaos which is cool I mean like obviously because no one had or knew of the Requiem Blaster in the past they couldn't destroy it so I would like to think that Megatron, when he finally pulled himself apart, got that out of himself, you know, and became Unicron uh, Megatron again, he probably hit it there. Because if you watch the old shows, uh, and even the end of the original movie, they show you that Unicron's head is a moon now of, Uni of uh, Cybertron. And it's going to be there forever because Cy Unicron is like... His mass is undestroyable, you know, there's just so much of him, there's probably pieces littering the galaxy forever. But, let's take a look at that scene right here, because that answers, of course, where our, our uh, Agents of Chaos actually come from and begin. Yes, Megatronus. I believe I have. Excellent. Now you have what you need to exact your revenge upon Megatron. And all I have to do is kill anyone who stands in my way. That is fantastic. Total callback to the old show, of course, because it's Unicron's head, and answers evolutions to old things in the past, which we'll touch on a little bit later in the extra part after. Next, we have Primal. This is awesome. Windblade actually asks, you know, Optimus Primal, why he trusts Megatron, and it's it's epic what he says. He reveals why and how come he trusts Megatron. And let's take a look at that right here. Because he told me he would give his life for Cybertron. And if it falls into Megatronus' hands, we'd all be doomed. Yeah, 
But... You should know. Megatron does lie. Not this time. Look deeper, Windblade. Into Megatron. And into yourself. That is awesome. I mean, Primal literally shuts Windblade right up, and he's like, no. This guy is gonna do it. Because he has to do it. And that's why he's gonna do it. So that's great, man. Thank you, Primal, for showing up and being a badass yourself. That's incredibly awesome. I love it. Next. Next again, we have Rodimus Kron. This is cool. He states that he has enough power to defeat even Megatron in his current state of Rodimus Kron and his power of chaos that even Megatron once was tapped into. And it's cool because Rodimus Kron throughout the show, he, he mentions that he can sense Megatron because of his time as Galvatron and his time being controlled by the chaos. So that's awesome. Let's take a look at Rodimus Kron. Rodimus Kron's statement to Megatron right here. The Matrix of Chaos has made me strong enough to destroy even you, Megatron. Destroy me how? By annoying me to death, Junior Prime. Fantastic and epic. I love... I love these badass lines that these guys say to each other. It's just so cool. And this leads us right into this next one. I mean, Megatron and Rodimus Kron are in their battle, of course. And he says a great line. He, he like, pulls his guns on him, and he literally is, like, rusting pieces. You know, take that, Megatron. And it's great. Let's take a look at that. Overlord interrupts, and it's funny. Let's take a peek. Your resistance is impressive. Perhaps... Some of Unicron still courses through your circuits from your time as Galvatron. It is of no consequence. Rust in pieces, Megatron. I love that. I love when they have the lines that are like, uh, they're rewritten to be like they're robots that are living, like the rust in pieces thing. Like we would say, you know, like, uh, rest in pieces. It's fantastic. It's fantastic. Next, we have a sweet line that comes from Unicron. That is right. This is the first moment he awakens. And we are finally, we take realization that he is not actually gone. This is not just somebody who is using his power. He is a conduit of the mighty Unicron himself. And it's great because it's like, uh, it's a neat moment when they're trying to figure out where the library is. And of course Unicron would know exactly where it is to tell them where to go, because the library is located on his brother, Primus Cybertron. Let's take a look at that right here. But I'm definitely not in Tundra Library. No, not there. He speaks of the Athenium Sanctorum. Unicron. Unicron is always present. Well... That's good to know. Hell yeah, Unicron. You tell them what to do, because you know all. You're a titan, a god. You are you are all-knowing, man. Next. Next, next, next. We have this fantastic line. I love this. Megatronus thinks he's going to talk shit to Megatron, and Megatron ain't going to have it. So let's take a look at the epic funniness of what Megatron tells Megatronus here. Just give up already. Give up? You obviously have no idea who you're dealing with. So what exactly makes you think you can stop me now? <sighs> because I'm Megatron. <sighs> and now you've pissed me off. Hell yeah. Megatron is he ain't gonna give up. He's Megatron. Megatron never gives up. Prime would know that. <laughs> the Million Year War, right? Next, next, next. Next we have the great line that is exchanged between Grimlock and Prime. Primal. And that is, of course, he, he yells at them, you know. Let, let's keep fighting. Let's get going. And Grimlock yells out, you know, like, I, I like this new Prime. <laughs> so let's take a look at that great line right here. Can barely move. Keep fighting. Uh. 
Hell yeah. The battle is going on. We are in the midst. And it is time to rock, guys. Not time to give up and sit down. Fight, fight, fight. Okay, next. Next we have this. This is a good one. Unicron proclaims to Megatronus that he is more powerful than he will ever be. And he is a speck on his radar. And he will, he will destroy the Matrix. The final piece of his brother that he hates so much, Primus. And of course, it's not the final piece, but I think it's more like the final living piece of Primus, you know, the Matrix. Because of course, Cybertron's there, but I guess he's dormant, sleeping, never to return, most likely. But let's take a look at that right here, because it's epic. He's, he's a badass. And, you know, Judd Nelson really, really kills it, playing as Unicron's voice in this as well. So let's, let's take a look at that right here. With the Matrix of leadership within my reach, I will finally put an end to the last remnants of Primus, including you and the rest of his beloved 13 Primes. Unicron, you tell these little, little bots who is the master now. So that is awesome. I love that. I love that. And it's also a true return of the one and only Unicron from the film, you know, because he was never really gone. He was just sleeping again. So final line, final line here is, of course, Megatronus. Megatron tricks him into giving up his plan and what he's actually doing in front of his love, Solus Prime, who, of course, this all started and he killed her because she doesn't like killing and destruction so this of course leads her to destroy him finally and that is awesome let's take a look at him spilling the beans right here when i manipulated the combiners into warring with one another in order to bring the enigma of combination into play and when the titans returned you did nothing but watch as i claimed the matrix of leadership and murdered your friend optimus prime that's right, and of course, the the bane of all villains, they love to monologue their goddamn plans. What were you thinking, man? And in front of your love, dude. <sighs> and of course, that leads to him being destroyed by her, being pulled into the Well of All Sparks, which is a blast of life, new Transformers, a new age, which we'll touch on in just a second, because we are now in the Easter eggs, guys, and there are a ton. I mean... Even through there and all that, there was pretty much Easter egg galore because this show is just a, it's an homage, a connection, uh, an amazing, amazing show. So right to start us off, a simple one, of course, is Optimus Primal and the fact that he transforms into Optimal Optimus. And this is a connection to Beast Wars because that is where he is originally from. And this gives us an actual connecting point. This shows us a timeline, actually, like, and where... Optimus Primal came from before the show because in the show they just tell us that he was a scientist and this gives us what he did before all that so that I love that that is fantastic next we have Optimal Optimus this is a great cool thing because this leads us to Beast Wars as well but he tells Prime what he is gonna that he will lead them to a new age of peace and that he believes of I believe sorry I believe that what will happen, because you're probably saying, oh my god, he's Optimal Optimus, that doesn't happen until later. Well, that's fine. Because right now, they need a leader, a prime, so that's what's going to happen. So like right now, and Beast Wars doesn't happen for hundreds of years later. So right now, you know, they're in this age, they're in this time, he's in a lead, and I think that eventually he will remove the Matrix, which he will put into storage along with the Requiem Blaster and the uh, Enigma of Combination. And of course, he will then revert back to Optimus Primal, and he will become the scientist that we all know and love who leads our band of heroes back then in Beast Wars to save the original crew of the Ark. Hell yeah, hell yeah. I love it, I love it. There is no argument anymore. Beast Wars and Beast Machines is now canon. It is a connecting and an ending point of G1. Thank you for this, I love it. Next, Optimal Optimus. He says that the light from the Well of the Allsparks at the end, remember I mentioned this, he, uh, this will bring life to a new age of Transformers. And this actually leads us right to Beast Wars, because that new age, those, those, those Transformers are obviously going to be the Maximals. 
and the Predacons. Hell yeah, there we go. We have them mentioning them being born as if. That is, that's, that's great. I love it. And this is, of course, seen in the past when, uh, at the end of the whole story, at the end of Beast Machines, this is a thing that occurs when Optimus Primal kills Megatron, the big head version of him in the end of Beast Wars, and that is what happens. That is another connecting point. The Well of All Sparks is in that show. They protect it, and he pulls that himself and Megatron into it to end the war forever and fix the planet and give organic life because remember in Beast Wars they were trying to get organic life to bring it back to Cybertron and save its planet, save the planet itself, its its bio-organic nature, which was of course originally raped and destroyed by the Quintessons all those years ago when it turned the planet into Cybertron Primus as we know it. So that is awesome. That is a lot of stuff. That is some friggin' fantastic connection. Next, Solus Prime Spark which I touched on just for a second there. They mention in here that Solus Prime, when she was killed way back in the day, this she is the Well of All Sparks. So that that gives us a connection right there. So what does that mean? That means that when she died, she created the Well of All Sparks. You might be asking yourself, what's the Well of All Sparks? Well, it's what gives life to all Transformers. And at this point when this occurred, there were no Transformers yet. There was just the Primes that were made by Primus to fight Unicron. So guess what? That tells us when the Age of Transformers actually began. That is fantastic, because when that occurred, the new Transformers were born, the first the first wave of Transformers, which is, that's, that's amazing that they tell us this stuff. Awesome, awesome stuff we never had in the past. And of course, in Beast Machines, that's they have their base near the Well of All Sparks, they protect it, and of course, it's the end note of the whole story. Another cool, cool Easter egg, a Beast Wars and Beast Machines connection again is that they show uh, when the Transformers are dying in this show, lots of them die, they show their sparks actually leave their bodies and go back to the Well of All Sparks because they can return. All Transformers can return. Most Transformers would return as new Transformers, but some powerful Transformers can come back as who they were. So that is awesome. I love that that is finally shown, explained a little bit, connected. Next, another cool connection to actually Beast Machines and the fact that they tell us about the bio-organic nature of Cybertron is in the beginning of the show and a few other times, you know, they show us they, f they show us nature in Cybertron, something that most people don't know about, but there is nature, there are living creatures even on Cybertron in its depths because they've had to hide from the Transformers and all of the robotic, you know, alterations that have occurred to the planet. So that is awesome. Just a, it's a little thing, but it speaks volumes for the story and what occurs eventually in, you know, Beast Machines when they save that part of the planet and give it new life. Next, next fun thing. This is amazing because it answers a question of the film and, and of Unicron's origins, sort of, in a sense. I mean, we know he's a god and he was, pro he was built by the Quintessons along with Cybertron, but when they talk about wh where the Requiem Blaster came from, what it was used for, it was built... To defeat Unicron. So when he first did his first rage way back before Transformers, they made the Requiem Blaster and they gave it to Megatronus and he, you know, shot or subdued, obviously, put into a hibernation, you know, Unicron. And that gives us an answer to where the hell was he? You know, if he's so powerful, why didn't he destroy the Transformers before the film? Well, now we know. He was hibernating, building strength, recuperating to destroy them all and get revenge on them again for all of that. So that's that's fantastic. No more questions, only answers with this show. I love it. Next, and I said I was going to mention this, and that is the Matrix of Chaos. The Matrix of Chaos is amazing, and I believe that they do speak of this in the comics, but now finally in canon, in comics, I mean the cartoon, sorry, in the cartoon, the series is, we have it existing now. And this gives us an answer to, of course, what Unicron actually did to Megatron in that scene in the film. Yeah, so we obviously see in, in the show what happens, but this gives us more an evolution of the idea. So obviously we can take from this that in the background, we don't see it, but he's implanting it within him when he rebuilds him into Galvatron, the Matrix of Chaos, which, because we don't see anything touch Megatron, obviously is what fixes him and turns him into Galvatron. So that's awesome that that is in there. So now we have this thing existing in the show 
that gives us an answer, a connection, a lifeline to Unicron, which is awesome. I love this. One final cool Easter egg to, of course, I'm going to mention it again, Power Masters and the Super God Master Force. Overlord uses, I think he did in the last show too, he uses a Power Master ability. And they always call like out like cool moves like a lot of those old uh, Japanese animes did, but like they would use like almost like, uh, you know, Hidokens and stuff, but he would do like a Chakogen thing and like he would stop blasters. And in this show, he does that and he, he catches the blasts and sh throws them back at people, which is cool because that's a Power Master unique ability that no other Transformers can use. And they show him using it. I love that. So thanks again. I mean, taking note, like I said, I mean, I think that's a callback to him saying the line that, you know, if you forget the past, you're doomed to repeat it. And that's cool that they do a cool nod to that because most Americans, they don't remember or don't want to remember Headmasters, Super God Master Force existed. And of course, even Victory happening way after and in between all of this. So that's cool. I mean, that's great because those shows are fantastic and really good. And you should watch them. Next... We have fun stuff. Fun stuff in this show. There are a couple cool things in this one. And, of course, we get to start off with another original guy coming back. And this is cool. It's none other than Greg Berger. He comes back as Grimlock, because he was the original Grimlock. Me, Grimlock, of course. And in this show, he also gets to do Volcanicus, the Dino Combiner. So welcome back, Greg Berger. I love that you got to come back and bring life back to Grimlock, your old friend. Thank you. And uh, next we have our a new tra another Transformer first, which is a cool one to note. Our old friend who was once Hellboy comes back as Optimus Primal and Optimal Optimus, Ron Perlman. And it's cool. I mean, we don't get the original voice back, which is fine. Who knows why? There's millions of reasons why. But Ron Perlman kills this role, and I love hearing him play as this this amazing Transformer that I've I've always loved. I mean, I didn't get to grow up watching G1. I was born at the time that the show was pretty much over with. I saw the film, but my Transformers from when I was a kid was Beast Wars, actually. And I got to grow up with that one, so Optimus Primal was my Optimus Prime. Even though I love Optimus Prime, but he was my show. I got to watch it when it was out, when it was new, it was fresh, and talk about it and be part of it. So that's awesome. Thanks, Ron Perlman, for, you know, making this character awesome again and bringing him back. Next, this is a fun one. I wanted to mention this because I think it's cool that they did this. And, you know, smart things do this. You know, they... they they parallel things in realistic life. And that is, I want to touch on, you know, the Primes mythos. The religion and the, the backstory of the Primes is very mythological gods, you know, like the Titans and the gods. You know, the Titans were the original gods and their children were the gods, you know, like uh, Zeus and all them. And uh, they were overthrown by the, the children, you know, Zeus and the gods, to become gods. And then they locked and killed the Titans away. And that's cool because that's literally, like, in a nutshell, what this storyline finally explains to us their entire past. So, originally, of course, we have the Quintessons build the planets. Boom. We have Unicron and Primus born. They are brothers. One is a factory. Primus is a factory to make Autobots and, and uh, the war line. Decepticons, basically more or less like a warehouse in a, in a, in a you know, workplace. They made Unicron to be a defensive war mechanism. Unicron eventually goes mad and goes on his war path. Who knows? They never tell us what he really did, but he becomes a villain, okay? And they must be, he must be stopped. So at this point, of course, the Requiem Blaster is, com is made by Solus Prime. It is given to Megatronus. He uses it to battle Unicron. I just want to say that would be fucking epic to see that. I would love to see that somewhere. But, oh well, we can just imagine it in our amazing minds for now. But he, he defeats Unicron, puts him in his hibernation or whatever until the film. And then, of course, he kills Solus Prime, giving birth to the Well of All Sparks and the Age of Transformers. Blah, blah, blah. On to G1. There we go. An entire backstory and mythos of the Transformers that we have known and loved for so many generations now. And I love it. Thank you, guys. That is, that's awesome. I love it. I love it. I love it. Next, we have Hot Rod. Fun stuff. Hot Rod gets to recover. They do get to pull the Matrix of Chaos out of him. He gets to become Hot Rod again. Welcome back, buddy. But he is going to suffer a lot of psychological damage due to his time, extended time, with the Matrix of Chaos being Rodimus Kron. So get better, Rod, Hot Rod. We'll see you soon, buddy. So that's cool. I like that. 
Prime returns again. That is awesome. I By the prize, I don't believe it. Some people get tired of it, I can never get tired of it. And what's better is that they finally use this, I mean, they don't literally say it, okay, they're not going to say it, but it's insinuated 100%. This gives us the explanation why he comes back all the time. He is the 13th Prime. Optimus Prime is. And he says it, he says that his connection to the Matrix allows him to become back, and he even says the power of the Primes is, is amazing, and let's take a look at him coming back real fast, just for fun, because can't see it enough, here he is. How is this possible? When Solus ended the threat of Megatronus, my spark was no longer tethered to the well. It is indeed the power of the Primes that allows my spark to take form. Prime has to come back, and it's cool. I like this too because, you know, why wouldn't he be the leader? And who he doesn't need to be the leader anymore. It's cool because now he gets to be, like, he literally tells Optimus Primal he gets to lead, right? That's awesome. So that, to me, okay, imagination time. What does Optimus get to do? Well, I think that for a long time, he gets to be the Alpha Trion, the old geezer, the wise man who gets to talk to people and give wisdom to everybody. Well, you know, there's this new age of peace, and that's fantastic, so thanks. That's, that's great, Prime. Stick around, my friend. Next, we get it. I'm going to show you another clip because this is an emotionally awesome one. Prime proclaims that Megatron is his brother. And that's awesome. It's like a thank you for all he has done because he wakes up and is wondering where, you know, his brother is. And he's not around. And they tell him that he, he saved them all. Let's take a look at that scene real fast. He was true to his word. He did sacrifice himself for Cybertron. We've all made sacrifices, Optimus. As did Megatron, my brother. I love it. I love it, I love it. Prime says it. Megatron is his brother, and I could not agree more. They are brothers. Brothers in arms. Brothers in battle. Brothers to the end. Final. Final fun thing, for real quick. And it's just fun. That, uh, you know, they show Starscream. <laughs> they show him again. His spark is still there. And it's funny as hell because, you know, he's going to show up in Beast Wars, we all know, to possess Waspinator the Predacon. Final thoughts of Power of the Primes, the final chapter of the Prime Wars trilogy. This is an awesome one. I love this show so much. It's very good. But let's start off by bowing our heads to remember the bots we've lost, good and bad, because there was so many in this final chapter. We lost Solus Prime, the Forger. We lost Computron, the Combiner. We lost Devastator, the Combiner. Menasaur, the Combiner. Sludge, the, the Dinobot. Victorion, the Combiner. Overlord is, is destroyed. Predaking is kill that's insane megatronus is finally finally defeated megatron of course sacrifices himself for us all and finally unicron of course from megatron's sacrifice is finally eradicated and destroyed his evil is no more awesome awesome and we will miss them they will be remembered forever <laughs> awesome next another quick note i like to mention and I've mentioned it a few times, but I love to, I can't stress it enough. After this, if you're looking and hungering for more, you can finally watch if you didn't, or if you did, watch it again. Beast Wars seasons, and of course, Beast Machines. Five seasons of fantastic awesomeness and a true closure to, you know, the, the hell on Cybertron and all that has happened there over this millennia of time that has spanned, and now we have all these answers and everything. It's so fun and so great. I mean, fantastic. I love it. Final thing, and I would like to do this because it's coming soon. Netflix is doing the Transformers War for Cybertron trilogy, and I would like to give you guys 
a little prediction. And my thoughts on the show, because of course I'm going to love the show, I can tell you that immediately I'm going to love the show, but they've told us the names of part one and part two, and I can speculate a little bit on what it might be about. And by the names, of course, the first show will be called Transformers War for Cybertron Trilogy Part 1 Siege. Okay, we've already established with the trailer, I hope you guys have seen it, that the show is going to start on Cybertron, the war. So I believe that we are going to get a fresh reboot of the entire storyline, finally, with this awesome CG animation, very, you know, hearkening back to the G1 styles of everything. And it's going to start us with the war, finally. And I hope this happens. I think it's going to happen. I love for this to happen. So that's part one, okay? So Siege is going to be that. And I believe that part two, because here we go, the name is called Earthrise. So I believe that Siege will get wrapped up with our Ark and Nemesis flight to Earth. Pew! The famous crash. Hopefully they do a time skip. Hopefully maybe they'll bring it to our present time instead of the 80s. We don't need that anymore. And I think it'll be called Earthrise because the Transformers are going to rise on Earth to continue the war. And that is how we all started originally. And that is awesome. And I think that this is fantastic. I'm on board because it'll probably be shorter and a much more compact version of this insane story with, you know, of course, as we've been seeing, a much more adult storyline with a lot of action, death, and high stakes the whole way around. And I'm on board for this. I've also heard that uh, the all spark and things like that are going to be in the story. So that's fantastic. So a good medley of everything from the past and everything that we've had in the in the present and future, you know? So that's great. And one more cool thing, Hasbro revealed a toy. They won't show us what it looks like, but they fill in the box, okay? And what they have called him is important. And I would like to just guess, because I would love for this, we got it in Prime, Transformers Prime, uh, Ultra Magnus as, as a leader. Okay, when Megatron kills Optimus Prime, I believe that's what happens in Prime, they needed a new leader. And Ultra Magnus is chosen, actually. And that is awesome, because if you remember in the film, he fails, even though he's supposed to be Optimus Prime's best friend. And I think this is cool, because here's the deal. The figure is called Leader Ultra Magnus. And this is cool. I think that what they're going to do is replace Rodimus Prime with maybe an Ultra Magnus Prime or Prime Magnus or something. And that would be awesome. Or maybe he'll just take his original name. Or maybe he'll get blown to bits and we'll still get the other story anyways. Because for him to be leader, don't we need Optimus Prime to die again? Or, I guess, the original death retold? Whew. Whew. It's going to be epic. It's going to be epic. I cannot wait. And I hope you can't wait either. But of course, I loved the Prime Wars trilogy in its entirety. The Power of the Primes was an epic tale and an ending. I would love to hear what you guys loved about the shows, any of the shows, in the comments below. Like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.